Okay, in this video, we're going to look at some simple cryptography exercises. So the first cipher we're going to look at is known as a Caesar shift cipher, and it's named after Julius Caesar, who famously used one, you know, back in the day. And I should say that um, this is also known as an additive cipher. Okay, so the idea behind the Caesar shift cipher is you take each plain text letter and you shift it a fixed number of places to the right. So in this example, we're going to do a shift of 9, which means if we have the plain text letter D, for instance, that's going to be shifted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spaces to M. Then if we have the letter S, that's going to be shifted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but then we loop back around 8, 9 to the letter B. Okay, so let's encry encrypt this message, math is fun. So that means we need to shift M nine units to the right, A nine units, and so on and so forth. So we'll just do this one at a time. So M goes to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that goes to V. And then A goes to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, J. Great. T goes... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to C. H goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to Q. So there we've got our first word, which is math. So it's V, J, C, Q. And then the next one, um, I goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to R. And then I'll just do the rest of them because it's really the same kind of game from here on out. So we get R, B, and then O, uh, D, W. So this would be the cipher text. Um, and this would be, so if our plain text is the phrase math is fun, then our cipher text would be uh, that combination of letters. Okay, so now let's decrypt this. So if in order to encrypt, we count to the right. In order to decrypt, we count to the left. Which means if we want to decrypt this letter H, we count back this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's going to decrypt to the letter Y. And you might say, well, couldn't I count forward a certain amount and get the same answer? And yes, you can. And in this case, it would be counting forward 17. And that's because 17 plus 9 is 26. But counting 26 is like counting all the way around the alphabet. And so let's just check that. So if we start at H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we get Y. Okay, so let's do a couple more and then we'll skip to the answer. So let's do H. I'm going to count backwards just because it's fewer letters. So if we start at X, we're going to count back 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So O is the second letter. And now let's do D. So this means 1, 2, 3, but that's going to loop around. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So Y, O, U. So U is the first word. And then let's see what uh, J goes to. So J goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's an A. And then I'll just fill in the rest. So this decrypts to you are right. Okay. So this is an example of the Caesar shift cipher, or another name for it would be um, an additive cipher, and it's the easiest kind of cipher to break. In fact, as long as you know exactly what happens to one letter, then you can easily figure out what happens to all the other letters. Okay, the next cipher we're going to look at is a play on the Caesar shift cipher. I don't know if that has a technical name, I'm just going to call it the Caesar shift cipher plus additional. So the rule is that the first plain text letter is shifted a fixed amount, and then each additional letter is shifted that amount plus some more. And you add up those additional shifts as you move forward. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at an example. And our example will be the first letter is shifted three units, and then each preceding letter is shifted in an additional one place. So that means the second letter will be shifted three plus one or four units. The third letter will be shifted three plus one plus one or five units, and so on and so forth.
Okay, so let's say we need to encrypt uh, the message C me. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So that means our first letter S is going to be shifted three units because that's our first letter. So let's see, that's going to shift to one, two, three. So that's going to shift to V. And then our second letter E is going to shift an additional unit. So that'll be four units. So let's see that. So E goes to one, two, three, four. So that, that goes to I. And then our next letter is going to shift four plus one units or five units. So that means this E is going to go to one, two, three, four, five, J. Great. And then this M is going to get shifted five plus one units or six units. So let's see that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's going to shift to S. And then finally, this last E is going to shift six plus one units or seven units. So let's see that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our ciphertext is this uh, V-I-J-S-L. Okay, so let's just reiterate what happened here. Our first letter S gets shifted three units because that's built into our system. Then the next one gets shifted three plus one. That's going to be four. This one gets shifted uh, four plus one. That gets shifted five. This one gets shifted six. And this one gets shifted seven. Okay, so that's how we do that. Okay, so now let's see what we want to decrypt. So we'll decrypt the message K-I um, Q-R-V. Okay, so we'll use the same rule here. Instead of shifting to the right, we have to shift back to the left because we're decrypting. And so this first letter K is going to be shifted three units back to the left. This one four, this one five, this one six, and this one seven units back to the left. So here we're shifting back this way, this way, again reiterating the fact that we are decrypting in this case. Okay, so let's see what happens to K. That needs to be shifted 1, 2, 3 to H. Let's see what happens to I. That needs to be shifted 1, 2, 3, 4 to E. Let's see Q. So that needs to be shifted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to L. R needs to be shifted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 also to L. And then V needs to be shifted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to O. So our decrypted message is hello. And so this cipher is harder to break because everything is not shifted the same amount. But still, it's not as secure as some things that are maybe more modern. Okay, I'm going to clean up the board and we're going to look at something called a tabular transposition cipher. Okay, the next cipher we want to look at is known as a tabular transposition cipher. So there are a couple of different versions of this, some with and some without keywords. We're going to look at both, starting with the ones without keywords. So the idea goes like this. We want to write the plain text message in rows of a fixed length. So that's agreed upon by the sender and the receiver of the message and then read column-wise. And that reading of the uh, message column-wise is going to give us our ciphertext. OK, so let's look at this first example of encryption. So let's suppose we have rows of length 8, and we want to encrypt the message meet at first and pine at midnight. So we want to turn this into something um, written in rows of 8 characters. So let's see that. That's going to be M E E. T A T F I. So notice that has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters. Then we're going to pick up where we stopped. So we stopped right there. So here we're going to have R S T um, A N D P I. Great. And then N E A T M I D. N, okay, and then we have I, G, H, T, and then notice we don't have enough letters to fill out the fourth row, so what we'll do is pad it with kind of any letters of our choice. So we could pad it with all the same letter, like A's, we could pad it with some random letters, maybe let's just put A, B, C, D here. Okay, now we want to read this column-wise. So in order to encrypt this, 
we're going to read down this way. So we'll have MRNI and then ESEG and then ETAH and then TATT and then ANMA and then T uh, D I B and then F P D C and then uh, finally I I N D. Great. So that would be our encrypted message. Okay, fantastic. Now the next thing that I want to do is decrypt a message. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to that. Okay, so now we want to decrypt this following message, assuming that we originally had rows of length 5. But we need to do a little bit of a calculation here because we are going to write this message column-wise and we need to know how long each column is. In other words, how many rows there are. So maybe uh, let's do that by noticing the following. So uh, there are 20 characters. So I'll let you guys count and uh, see that there are definitely 20 characters. And uh, furthermore, we need rows of length 5. So that means there are 20 divided by 5 equals 4 total rows, which means our columns are going to have 4 entries. OK, great. So now we can get to doing this. So we can write this as C, E, E, I. So that would be the first column. And now we pick up from there, so that's going to be I, sorry, A, I, M, N, great, and then L, N, O, G, so we're here, L, T, R, V, and then M, H, uh, N, W, great. But now let's go ahead and write this as words. But notice if we read it row-wise, we can see that we get call me in the morning. So that's what our decrypted message is. So call the morning. And notice these letters at the very end, these letters V and W were padded letters. So in fact, we don't need those. OK, great. So um, I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit, and then we'll expand on this to see a tabular transposi transposition cipher with keyword. For our next example, we're going to look at a version of a tabular transposi transposition cipher that uses a keyword. So the basic idea is the same, but now our message is going to be broken up into rows of length, which is equal to the number of letters in the keyword. And then the result is read column wise, but not just straight left to right. It's going to be in an order based on the keyword, which we'll see by example. OK, so uh, our goal here is to use the keyword water to encrypt the message, please feed the dogs. So maybe here we notice that the word water has five letters, which means our rows need five letters. Great, so that means we're going to write this out as P-L-E-A-S. So notice that's five letters, and then we're going to pick up at E. So then we have E-F-E-E-D. Then we're going to have T-H-E-D-O, um, and then we have G-S. And now we need some buffer letters, so maybe I'll use A. B, C again, although you could use all the same letter or just kind of more random letters as well. Okay, so now if this were a plain old tabular transposition filter, now if this were just a plain tabular transposition cipher, we would just read this from left to right. But now, since we have this key word, so we want to take the letters in water and alphabetize them. So notice that's going to give us A, E, R, T, uh, W, and then we want to look for the position of these letters within the keyword. 
So notice A is the second letter in the keyword, E is the fourth letter in the keyword, R is the fifth letter in the keyword, T is the third letter in the keyword, and W is the first letter in the keyword. Now we're going to go down here and number these columns. So these are one, two, three, four, five. And then what we'll do is we'll read off the columns in this order. So notice we'll get the first, the second column first. So that means we'll have L, F, H, S. That'll be our second column. The fourth column second. So that'll be A, uh, E, D, B. The fifth column third. So that's going to give us S, D, O, C. The third column fourth, so that's going to give us E, 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 A. And then the first column last, so that's going to be P, E, T, G. Great. And that would be our um, enciphered message. Okay, great. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll decrypt one as well. Now we're going to do an example decoding a message using a tabular transposition cipher with keyword. So our keyword is prized. We'll use the ordering in the keyword later, but the first thing we want to notice is that there are six letters, which means we'll have a row length of six. Then furthermore, there are 24 total letters in this message, so you can count that up. There are eight groups of three, which means there's 24 divided by six, or four total rows, but that means the length of each column is four. So now what we'll do is we'll take this message and write it in columns, each column having four letters. So working left to right, that'll give us R, N, um, A, S. That'll be the first column. The next we have T, H, U, V. The next we have R, E, D, E. The next we have A, E, sorry, A, I, E, R. So that brings us up here. Now we have I, K, A, T, and then finally we have S, O, Q, R. So just to reiterate, we just worked left to right, and we wrote these in columns, each column having four letters. So notice, up to here became our first column, from here to here became our second column, from here to here became our third column, and so on and so forth. Now, if we look at this, this doesn't create a coherent message. We don't see any words in there. So we need to reorder the columns. And we'll recall that the ordering of the columns depends on how the letters in the keyword are ordered. And what we want to do is look at each letter in the keyword and see where they fall in the alphabet with respect to the other letters in the keyword. So notice that E is not the first in the alphabet, but it's in the first in the alphabet among the letters in the keyword. D is the second, I is the third, um, P is the fourth, R is the fifth, and finally Z is the sixth. So let's recall what that meant. That meant in this step before in the encrypting process, we would mix the columns up. And so now we want to unmix the columns. So before, the first column would have become the fourth column, the second column, the fifth column, and so on and so forth. So we want to reverse that. In other words, the fourth column needs to become the first column. So this fourth column is going to become our new first column. The fifth needs to become the second. The third stays the third. The sixth becomes the fourth. The first becomes the fifth, and the second becomes the sixth. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So now reordering these columns, uh, let's just notice that here we have uh, the, um, I'll write these in yellow, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So it corresponds to this, and we need to reorder them to the pink numbers. So that means our fourth column is going to become our new first column. So that's going to give us A, I, E, R. Then the fifth becomes our new second. So that's going to be I, K, A, uh, T. The third is going to become our new third. So we have R, E, D, E. 
The sixth becomes the new fourth. So here we have S O Q R. Um, the first becomes the new fifth. So here we have R N A S. And then finally, the second becomes the new sixth. So that's going to be T H U V. Great. But now if we read this row wise, we see some words. So notice here we have air, and then next we have the word strike, so air strike, and then notice here we have on, and now we've got a long word headquarters. So that runs this whole next to last row. So that means our decoded message is air strike, and notice this V was a superfluous letter, so that was just added for padding, so we don't need that V. Okay, good. This is a good place to end this video.